the struggles that we go through is just all related to not being healthy in one way or the other. You know what I mean? Like whether it's physically healthy with our with our health, like what we call health, but also like our mental health, our spiritual health, our financial health, and our background. Like whatever challenge you face, you're supposed to face it with positivity. You're supposed to go through life's challenges with a positive mindset to, you know, continue to work hard, never quit. And I feel like with positivity, courage, most importantly, faith in God and to that, all things are possible and keep on facing those challenges. That's just the way the universe works, man. You're going to be successful. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Heart to Court channel. I'd like to introduce my guest, uh, Dr. Nikhil Bala. Uh, Dr. Nikhil, uh, welcome. Thank you for uh, you know taking this uh, uh, opportunity with me to have an engaging conversation of of health, well well being, and and uh, you know and medicine. Uh, can you introduce yourself uh, and let us and pretty much give us a brief bio of of uh, who you are and what you do? Absolutely, I appreciate it. You know, it's my honor. Uh, you know, I know, man, I know you from before we have you, you know, and I just want to let everybody know I have the utmost respect and honor for, for you. I appreciate you for having me. Um, you know, my name is Nikhil. Uh, I come from New Jersey. I come from South Jersey. I'm from uh, the Voorhees, Camden County area. So my life experience has been in Voorhees, New Jersey, which is a true suburb in Camden, New Jersey as well. Um, also lived in many, many different places. Uh, I pretty much been exposed to a lot of different um, experiences within the Americas, within America and, you know, all over like traveling. I lived in a lot of different places. My people and them come originally from Punjab, which is a place is a state between India and Pakistan, India and what they call Pakistan or Pakistan used to be one country. So originally Punjabi by origin. And, you know, in terms of like, basically like, zip code, religion. I don't fit into no boxes. I'm just a human being. And I respect and love everybody who really has that love. I would love and respect everybody. And then I'm a medical doctor uh, by trade at this point. I'm in my third year of uh, residency training internal medicine. So my goal is to um, go back home to where I'm from in South Jersey and serve hand in New Jersey. Uh, you know, I've been basically around the whole Camden County area from a young, from a young boy from when I was growing up. Uh, I was born in Hartford, Connecticut. We moved to Jersey when I was like three. So, you know, my goal is just to go back home and really serve the whole county in particular, you know, focus on Camden, New Jersey and Borges, New Jersey, both in addition to any and everybody else, you know. I'm a martial artist too. So actually, uh, I want to be a martial arts teacher and help just healing healing from the inside out on every different level. Can you uh, share a little bit about uh, what you spe specialize in at the moment as a physician? Yeah, I'm in Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, Jersey City Medical Center. Um, it's uh, internal medicine. So, you know, that's like the core of adult medicine. So uh, anybody who's pretty much 18 years or older, we treat all of the basic um you know, being in internal medicine, when you go to a hospital, you're going to most likely meet an internal medicine doctor. They have family medicine doctors as well. Difference being family medicine also incorporates women and children's health. We don't really do women's health. We treat women for any medical issue, but women's health would be either a family medicine doctor could do it or OBG, OBGYN physician could do that. So pretty much we, we're adult medicine and then, you know, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, you know, all the internal organs, et cetera, um, you know, just general overall health. So an internal medicine doctor could go ahead and become a hospitalist, work in a hospital, or you could do a primary care. So a primary care general doctor could be a family doctor, family physician, 
family medicine or internal medicine. So, you know, you treat adult individuals for all their different things. You know, me personally, I want to be a primary medical doctor for a little bit, then transition into words, other things that's based on more so like being an educator and sharing a lot of knowledge and whatnot. But right now I'm training in internal medicine or an internal medicine doctor could go on and specialize into, for example, cardiology, um, gastroenterology, hematology, oncology, et cetera. Like you could, you could set, uh, specialize in the heart, lungs, kidneys, critical care, you know, pretty much that's the, the basic idea of internal medicine. And I'm right now in my third year of training in Jersey City, New Jersey. It's a city right across the bridge from New York City, which is North Jersey. And I'm from South Jersey, which is right across the bridge from Philly. So but my goal, God willing, is to finish my training up here and then move back home to South Jersey. And uh, pretty much work in a community. And really, I want to focus on lifestyle. I want to just help people heal, especially people, you know, anybody and everybody. But I think what speaks more to me and my journey and my struggle and my story is people who get astray. And especially those <clears throat> who might go deep into the streets or deep into violence or just a different type of, you know, what I mean, lifestyle than what I'm living now and trying to transition back towards a path of healthy, of living healthy and being, you know, constructive rather than destructive to ourselves, our community, and really just restoring the honor and the lifestyle of the, of the ancestors really that's what I'm on. Can you share that moment of realization when you actually said, now is the time to take the steps to become a doctor? Can you share a little bit about that? Describe that moment. Yeah, absolutely. So I pretty much knew at one point I definitely didn't want to become a doctor. That was the original, you know, it's funny. Um, it pinpoints back to one one key moment I remember when I was downtown. Uh, this, this, I was in Camden at one point in my life. I was in, you know, outside all day. So I was in Camden one day and it just clicked in my mind. And when we say downtown, it's not like downtown from other cities. Because our downtown, it's a small area of downtown where you got the college and you got like Campbell Soup, and that's pretty much it. You know, downtown in, in Camden is more so like a residential area, like a neighborhood. So I was downtown and I remember just being in a car, just actually, I'm in a car right now. I remember it's kind of like bringing me a little flashback. I remember looking outside the street and just seeing around and just thinking that. Number one, this is a beautiful city. Number two, there's a lot of amazing, real solid and thorough and honorable people here. And number three, that the struggles that we go through is just all related to not being healthy in one way or the other. Whether it's physically healthy with our with our health, like what we call health, but also like our mental health, our spiritual health, our financial health. Uh, you know, and I was just thinking, like, really, what we just need is a healthy relationship with ourselves, a healthy relationship with women, healthy relationship with violence, a healthy relationship with being able to earn. And it just clicked in my mind that, you know, that we just got to be healthy. It's like we have good hearts, but bad habits. You know what I mean? And that, that's really the moment that I, I, I realized how important health was. This was probably back in. I don't know, 07, summer 07, that's when I was outside every day. I wasn't involved in school or nothing like that. I just was around, um, you know, at that point in my in my life, that kind of clicked. Then fast forward a little bit, because it wasn't just the automatic, like, okay, that's what I should do to, that's what I'm going to do. That, that's also a whole nother process. Like, man, if I had to try to take that and make that into as little words as possible, I would just say, the lifestyle I was leading, I feel like it was de- not feel like like it was destructive and it created a lot of tension and strain, not only within myself, but within my loved ones and everything. And a lot of people don't talk about that, about the stress and the strain that it puts on the people who love you. And, you know, just overall, you know, you're in a, in a real stressful situation, but we know how to hide it well. So, we, yeah, I mean, you probably couldn't tell from the outside looking in, but it led me to a place of deep of depression. Like I put in pain 
and that pain is something that registered on my in my soul, and you become numb to it, and I basically understand, you know, I lived that. So I say that to say this, it led me to a deep, dark place, and that made me call out to God. So then I established, uh, well, I didn't go to no religion, no book, no nothing. I just went to, to the one and true living God inside, inside everything, including inside me. And it led me to, it just made me want to live clean, pure, work hard, get back into school. I had stopped going to school, um, go back to school, learn, read, and all that. And then, like, a miracle happened when I actually put that, you know, put that into practice and fought against, and it's a battle. And you can't get aside away from the fact that you have to fight against your own inner demons. You know what I mean? The bad habits. So I fought that fight by God's grace. God gave me the strength to actually even acknowledge it was a fight and the strength to fight it. Then I ended up getting back into school. That's a whole nother story that's a little deep and everything. But long story short, if I can, is got back into school. Then, like a miracle, I actually got back into school and then graduated. And I wanted to, I was at a decision making point. It's like, do I want to be? I really wanted to be a teacher and I really do want to be a teacher um, in Camden. Like, I feel like that's a little bit more hands on with the youth. And I really do honor and respect the teachers and I love the teachers. But I realized, like, my mom wanted me to be a doctor. And they say in Islam that, you know, heaven is at the feet of the mother. Um, you know, you got to honor and respect your mom. That's what she wanted. So that kind of played a little bit of part into it. I realized that's what God wanted for me, basically. And I didn't really want to do it fully, but I realized that's what I had to do. And then I was was the type of person I like to like embrace challenges. I kind of always chose the struggle route in my life. And I realized like if I become a teacher, I can't turn around and become a doctor. But if I become a doctor, I can turn around and become a teacher. So it's like, all right, this is what we're going to do. And then I pretty much applied and got into school. I wasn't going to get into school around here because, you know, my grades definitely wasn't over here getting in a medical school around here. Uh, I got into school in, in Poland. I got accepted. It was one of those schools that kind of was accepting anybody at that time. And you get financial aid through FAFSA. And I just took the flight to Poland and started medical school. And I've been on a journey ever since. That was summer 2007. I was in the, in the hood every day on the corner. And then I was, uh, you know, like just not involved in anything academic or anything like that. And then summer 2008, October 2008, I was in medical school. Speaking of, you know, embracing challenges, you know, and really embodying that essence of grit and resiliency, what are, what are the type of challenges and how do you overcome those challenges, find solutions in your day-to-day -day practice at the moment, especially now that we're living in, in you know, in the age of COVID and things of that nature? Mm. I'm on the front lines of that, like the, the world pandemic. I'm in the epicenter being in Jersey City, New Jersey, New York City, we're right across the bridge from New York City. So we were hit, you know, it was serious as it gets. Like this was, it was really crazy, like March 15th to April 15th, that was the second wave. So I was hands-on in the ICU, Jersey City Medical Center, you know, putting the lines on the COVID patients, you know, ma managing the vents, the meaning the ventilation, you know, when a patient gets intubated, they have a vent, got to change the vent settings, We're treating it according to ARDS protocol, you know, putting the orders in the whole nine. So, you know, the challenges of COVID, the challenges of residency, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like it was, it's a, it was a whole, it is a whole struggle to me, for me. It, and it's, it's a blessing because I'm grateful for the challenges and the struggles I go through. So, man, how do I deal with it? My go-to is just number one. Always remembering God and calling on God for the strength, moment to moment. Number two, always remembering that the only God's will is gonna come to pass. And then number three, like with that constant remembrance and understanding, you know, whatever goes right or wrong is really not in my hands. So now it's up to me to train. So working hard, putting in the time training, that's what <clears throat> relieves anxiety. You know, a lot of anxiety comes when you're not prepared. And when you're not prepared, it's come because you didn't train, you didn't work hard. 
So, you know, putting in that hard work and training and, and learning and doing the best you can when it's peace prepares you for when the challenge comes. So, you know, it's a lot of times that you spent, you know, we work crazy hours and all that during residency and then go home, try to read a little bit, keep on learning. You know, that's the best way, I think, to prepare with, you know, for any type of challenges or calamities. or, And I kind of like, in all humility, I've been dealing with it like my whole life, really. A lot of my life, I kind of seen real struggles and real life and death circumstances. You know, when you way certain people, you know, the way, you know, without really saying too much, there's people out here living with life and death where certain decisions you can get killed behind or certain, you know, things you see and go through and you experience. And what I've been through personally, you know, I kind of just like, unless you really about to get killed or you about to go to jail for life, it's not that serious. That's kind of crazy for some people to think, but in my mentality, it's like, you know, that that's a lot. That's real stress. This is too, but you go through a lot of those types of things and you face, you get faced with, you know, crazy jams that, you know, when you really in the midst of struggle and what I've seen, what I've seen people who I love go through, um, I kind of just always keep it in perspective that it all, I always had this mentality, like it always could be worse. Even when I was younger, like I would look at what my friends were going through and understand. And then I look back like, damn, what I went through was crazy, but I never felt like it was that crazy at the time because I understand it could always be worse. Not to really judge or compare myself to another person's perspective, just understanding that whatever I'm in could be worse. So, you know, it just helps me stay focused and stay positive in Punjabi culture. So later on in my life, I can reconnect it to my roots and my heritage. And then, uh, you know, the Guru Sikhi teaches us like in our people, in our background, like whatever challenge you face, you're supposed to face it with positivity. You're supposed to go through life's challenges with a positive mindset to, you know, continue to work hard, never quit. So I just try to stay solid. And when I'm under pressure, I just say less try to be helpful. I try to keep learning. I just try to do the best that I can train my, trust my training. And you know, at the end of the day, I, all I can do is my best. And you can't lie to yourself because you know, when you did, you know, when you didn't, when you don't, when you don't train hard, when you don't work hard, then, you know, you feel it when the pressure's on. So it's kind of like, with that being said, let's really keep learning, keep getting better. Then you go through more experiences. You, you capture those times that you did the right thing or the wrong, wrong thing. You learn from it apply it now. It goes well, kind of gives you more and more confidence. So just, you know, calling on God for my confidence, staying calm, poised, and, you know, calm, poised, and, and solid under pressure. These are the characteristics that, at least where I'm from in the era I'm from, that's what was real. And I appreciate that because that's what, you know, a lot of people in society might call them bad people. They, they taught me these principles and I value that. To me, that's so like to be fearless, you know, to be solid, to stand firm and stand solid on principles and not waver from your principle. That's to me something that's very valuable. We already have all the information that we need based on what it is, right, and how to take preventive care. But uh, if you'd like to really share more on that and also the best practices and healthcare measures to to really prevent acquiring COVID? COVID-19, it enters through the ACE2 receptor. The single most important thing is your oxygen saturation. It's not about how high your fever is, how much you cough, even though those are the symptoms that you feel. Lose your smell, lose your taste, the viral infection, meaning that you'll have muscle pains, joint pains, and things of that nature. I mean, that's all uncomfortable, but the single most important thing is your oxygen saturation. As long as your oxygen saturation stays above 92%, you get a pulse ox, which is something you put on your finger and it reads your oxygen level. As long as your levels are above 92 on the room air, meaning you don't need anything and you're breathing, that's, then you're good. There's no re real concern. The second issue is blood clots can form. So we've seen pulmonary embolism even strokes, et cetera. It affects your kidneys, microthromboemboli. Without getting into the details, your blood could clot. So you want to like move a little bit, not like if you actually are sick with COVID, not like 
go crazy, but it is a good idea to walk a little bit, to stretch a little bit, something light, just to keep the blood flowing a little bit, to prevent the blood clots. And then we see people with COVID develop a pulmonary embolism, and that's a tough situation. So down in the ICU, some of the patients have that scenario. Um, blood clots definitely have significantly contributed to worse people dying. Maybe the younger people most likely might have developed the PE. Uh, but, you know, that's the single most important thing is your oxygen saturation. Once you go into the hospital, like 80% of the people don't even make it to the hospital. Once you do get to the hospital, initially, if you don't need any oxygen requirements, you go to the EV, you know, you're above 65. You don't have any, uh, you don't need any oxygen. They might send you home and give you monoclonal antibodies and have you follow up with the PMD, meaning primary medical doctor as an outpatient. Or if you do get admitted, you don't need oxygen, then you might just be treated with supplementary treatments like vitamin D, uh, vitamin C, et cetera, sepical, robitussin, et cetera. Then once you start needing a little bit of uh, oxygen, meaning nasal cannula, Put the thing on your nose, oxygen flows. If you start to desat on that, then they might add the steroids, the remdesivir steroids. Starting to realize a higher dose of steroids is actually more beneficial depending. We've seen like HIV patients. I've seen HIV patients do well. When I admitted a patient that was an HIV, I thought she was going to be very much affected by this coronavirus because it's the immune, it's, you know, it's, it's, she has a weak immune system. But what we're saying is the cytokine storm, meaning let's, let's dig a little bit deeper into this to really understand. So we have an immune system. Let's make it very simple. If the bad guys, meaning the bacteria, virus, whatever, comes into our body, and if we kill it, if we hit the target, you have a healthy immune system. If we don't fight, meaning we decide that killing is the wrong thing to do, and we decide that we're not going to kill these pathogens and these colonizing agents. That's what AIDS is. AIDS is when your immune system is not working properly. And so the infection takes over. So you don't die from AIDS or HIV. You die from the infections because your immune system is not able to respond appropriately to the infection. And then an autoimmune disease is terrorism. An autoimmune disease is when the immune system targets the healthy, innocent cells which is always the wrong thing to do. So whenever you not, whenever you don't fight back, that's AIDS. Whenever you hit the target, that's health. Whenever you hit the innocent cells, that's an autoimmune disease like eczema, type one diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. A whole bunch of, a lot of immune, a lot of the diseases, you'll see 80, 70 to 80% of the diseases are actually a function of a type two or type three hypersensitivity when you really understand deeply medicine. And I know it's not framed like that in a lot of medicine books, but actually that's the truth. Uh, a lot of a lot of diseases are like type two, type three hypersensitivity reactions, meaning like lupus, et cetera, et cetera. Like meaning that an inflammatory process is the underlying, if really the immune system is at the heart of what's happening. So that understanding we can apply to COVID. So when COVID's there, what really is doing the most damage we've seen is the cytokine storm. So what that means is when the immune, so the, the difference between a bacteria and a virus, the bacteria goes into the bloodstream. Uh, atypicals have a different thing. That's what I call atypical. But typically a bacteria does not go inside the cell. A virus goes inside the cells. So you have a different type of immune response in each case. In COVID, what we're seeing is the cytokine storm, meaning the immune system of ourselves is attacking the cells that are affected with COVID, but also attacking the lungs. So it's our own immune system that's creating a cytokine storm that's actually doing the damage to our own cells. That's really creating us to decompensate and go into acute respiratory distress and acute respiratory failure. So what we've seen is HIV patients I've seen an HIV patient, they didn't, they didn't really get affected by COVID that bad. Maybe they already were on antivirals, antiretroviral therapy because they're on AIDS, or maybe they just didn't uh, mount a strong immune response, which saved them. And that's why we give steroids, and we're seeing that it's actually helping uh, save patients. Like I've seen patients come down low-dose steroids and increase their dose because they hit the ICU, 
now we're, we're going from dexamethasone six milligrams daily to salumedrol 125 q6 or eight and they really turned around like in the next day or two meaning you give more steroids it's kind of suppressing the immune system to prevent it from attacking itself and we've seen that have better, better outcomes so we have a healthy immune system that knows how to behave and how to react and interact with these different pathogens, that's in our best interest. And that just comes from being healthy, you know, overall. That's an excellent breakdown. Dr. Nikhil, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, that's that's actually, uh, again, I, I was able to register all of that and fully comprehend, right, at, at the best level and hope, hopefully- you know, I appreciate everyone. it. That's what I wanna do too, is I wanna take what the doctor knows and make it so that way the common person can understand it. And I think that's one of my strengths is to be able to do that. And I wanna really do that in the future with all the different diseases. That's one of my goals. You know, thank you for saying that. And I, I, the patients I work with and families, they really appreciate that. Now, granted, it does take time. And as a doctor, you run around crazy and you're busy and you already work crazy hours. And that makes you go home even later. But me personally, I'm okay with that. What would you recommend to someone that suffers from a uh, medical trauma? What would you recommend a few pointers, uh, a few, say, first key, first key steps that will enable them to somewhat accelerate their, um, their uh, path towards recovery or, or really just allow them to really shift their perspective while recovering from that trauma? First and foremost is that it's tough. Let's start there. It is hard and no one can take that away. I always go back to God, me personally. Now, if you don't believe in God, I respect that as well. And just believe in yourself. You know, believe in the energy that you have deep down inside. But for those who do believe, believers, uh, me personally, that's where my strength comes from. And if you don't believe in God, then we'll just call it the universe. So I personally believe that this universe is just, meaning that I find myself in a situation I'm in and I take ownership of that. So if I'm in a trauma, even if it's something that at the time might not even seem like it's my fault, it's not about placing blame. It's about taking responsibility that I'm here now and I accept where I'm at in this. And I've been uh, in traumatic. I've been through trauma. I've been through, by God's grace, I've never been in a situation where I was like, you know, like some people get their spinal cord severed or. You know, that, that reminds me of somebody from the town, Adam Talaferro. He was a, a from Voorhees Eastern High School, super athlete, played football. He turned his, and he's, he actually ended up becoming paralyzed from playing football in state nines. And I just, I, man, he just was so strong that he kept on trying and now he could walk. And he's one of those people that's a super inspiration. Like, for real, like, that's as real as it gets. I know people, you know, who've been shot. Uh, who've been, you know what I mean, just dealt with a lot of crazy situations. Uh, you see people here in, in my, you know, in the medical center. I don't, not, I don't respond to the trauma. That There's a trauma team. Surgeons do that. But basically the medical process to getting back from a trauma, Western medicine, the truth is it doesn't have a lot of good options because it's all about physical. There's no medicine you can give somebody. You know what I mean? It's all about physical. It's about PT, the PTOT, like physical therapy, occupational therapists, really take the lead role. There are certain medications depending on what's going on, but ultimately it's all about the rehab process. And the rehab process is all just a matter of staying positive. I just know one thing that whatever life puts, situation life's put me in, I'm just not going to quit and I'm going to keep trying. And what that means is, yeah, today I might not have given my all, and I feel like quitting today, but I'm not going to quit. And I'm going to try. And then tomorrow, I'm going to try harder. It's not about like going crazy one day. It's, it's about coming back the next day. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. And, you know, with minor things as a martial artist and minor pains that you deal with, uh, I just basically keep on keeping on. I think that's the best thing. And I think that's where strength of prayer comes from. I don't pray for things in this world. I pray for the strength, for honor, for dignity, to face challenges, solid as a person who's positive and to always hold my head up and face each challenge with positivity and 
courage and bravery. And I pray for those things. And then in terms of like, you just got to keep on trying your best to do, if you have like spell and you have like spinal trauma, sciatica, those types of traumas, you know, just try your best to do your stretches, uh, balance your body, natural movements, do yoga. 100% yoga is good for the balance. You know, the muscle knots and all that. You got to get the size out, but really you got to stretch. You know, if you got shot, you know, you got to ask yourself, like, really the truth. You got to dig deep. Like, what's the reason I was in this situation to begin with? What was it even over? You know what I mean? Why am I in this situation? And if you were wrong, I mean, we're not going to really get into all that, but I, I do believe that's the I'm not going to lie. But what I'm going to say is that the you got to heal. You know what I mean? It's a process of healing. So no good comes from anger. No good comes from revenge. Good comes from love and justice. Somebody created an injustice where they just went out here and I got shot as an innocent bystander for no reason. It's not a good situation to be in. And it's not good for that person to be around and able to, you know, and I don't really believe in putting people in jail, but that's a whole nother conversation. I'm just going to say the healing part, we have to just look into ourselves and heal in terms of what got us to where we in. Like, I always try to figure out what I did to get in the situation I'm in. I take responsibility for it and learn from it. Sometimes you do get in a traumatic situation by doing the right thing. And you know what? That's okay. In fact, I believe you get a lot of rewards for that. If you try to do the right thing and ended up getting hurt or in a traumatic situation because of that, or, you know, you got, we got to see the difference between bravery and reckless. Like, being reckless is not brave, you know, but also it's never good to be scared. So we got to, like, process these things with true discernment and then I would say continue to really feed your body with love make sure you keep all positive thoughts I try to like feed my body with love and light whatever is the part of my body that's not you know I try to feed it with love and light feed myself with the right vitamins nutrients and minerals that's going to feed my body try to avoid the toxins and I fall short on these things I'm saying these are what I strive the whole conversation about honor and everything. I'm, I'm trying, I'm striving towards that. I'm, I'm an imperfect person, which is cool because I'm trying my best. You know, I, I make mistakes and I, I do fall short, but then I keep on going and continuing the next day. It's all about getting back on, not beating yourself or getting off your discipline, but getting back on your discipline. And I feel like with positivity, courage, most importantly, faith in God and to that, all things are possible and you keep on facing those challenges. That's just the way the universe works, man. You're going to be successful. You've got to be patient enough to see it through. And it's those struggles really that when I find myself in a struggle or challenge, I, I thank God because I was like, all right, I'm about to learn something from this. I'm about to get stronger at the end of this. So, you know, I try to ask God why I always ask why, like, why am I, what are you trying to teach me right now? Not in an arrogant way, not in a, you know what I mean? But I question in the sense of like, I really want to learn. Like I'm a student of life and God is the teacher. So, all right, I want to know what am I trying to learn from this? And, you know, I just feel grateful to God for everything because there's people living in pain. There's people suffering. There's people out here going through, going through the most. And maybe sometimes those people are us, but we just got to always be positive and try our best to keep moving forward. I would say, Keep doing your, keep moving your body, keep stretching, keep finding balance, keep focusing your thoughts on positive thoughts, keep learning, keep growing, focus your mind on growth and development. And just, so you could use your struggles and things to distract you from where you got to go, or you could use your work to distract you from your pain. That's a wonderful breakdown again, especially that the healing experience this the healing process of of the process of rehabilitation for recovery i think nowadays that's my overarching theme about anything whether it's physiological psychological financial spiritual all of that i think we all need healing in every level every component of life and uh, my, my actually my personal core values breaks down into six gratitude intention, uh -huh. intention. purpose Her yeah uh, uh strength Strength. impact and healing 
is the last one. And I think that's that, that tied like song, it. man. That's a part. That's part right tied, there. Ties them all together. <laughs> I, I've actually, I've actually created an overview video of of a breakdown. I'm going to send that your way, and hopefully, yeah, eventually really share it, share it with the grander audience. What's your uh, favorite healing modalities for self care and again self improvement? It's multifaceted in my opinion. I'll just share with you my healing process and what healed me, man. When I was broken down and I was in a, in a situation where I was full of guilt, shame, depression, for the pain I put in that wasn't necessarily righteous, trying to create an image for myself and just everything just going all the way astray. You know what I mean? Uh, when I didn't know, I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do. And I was completely lost. I went inside to myself and on that day, which was March 15th, 2008. I remember summer 2007, it was when I was like turned up and to the max. The whole process took many years, started when I was eight years old, that process of becoming that person that I thought was real. Uh, when I was brainwashed and the thinking was real, you know, um, I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do, but I realized that everything from this world comes and goes, nothing in this world is nothing in this world lasts. The only thing that lasts is God. And the only thing that will never forsake you is your inner conscience. So I would say connect to your own inner conscience. Don't follow no man. Don't follow no book. Because when you're vulnerable like that, that's when you get people come along and try to mis mislead you. Like you don't follow, don't follow nobody. Follow your own inner self. And then the mind is, tricks the mind plays tricks and starts to make you think it's coming from your spirit but it's coming from your mind so the trick to that is to be clean so you can have that discernment when you got to clean your mind you got to fight against your you know addictions and attachments and you just got to stand stand strong and not give in to your addictions and be healthy clean habits so number one connect to your inner conscience i connected to my inner conscience and i listened to it it didn't make sense but i did it anyway it told me to go sit down in the library and study. I wasn't in school. I had bills to pay. I didn't have an income other than what I was doing. I didn't, it said stop doing all that and live clean. And God provided down to my last penny. Uh, you know, and when I was down to my last, I submitted. A lot of us commit crimes because we're scared of the future. And we like we might have like a little bit now, but we scared tomorrow will be broke. When you submit to God, tomorrow will be provided for if you do the right thing now. So you got to train yourself to focus on submitting to God instead of chasing after things for this world. So you got to fast on the world. You know, we got to get, I had to give up drinking, smoking, chasing after women. I never really was into like chasing after women and money. That wasn't my twist. I was really more so wanted respect. And what I thought was respect, was, you know, being like a violent person when in reality the, you get much farther just being a helpful person but also being a solid person and being prepared to defend yourself is you know that's just regular that's that's you know that's your, every man every woman every person should be able to do that so that also makes sense that you ride to protect your friends and all that type of stuff so what i'm trying to say is number one submit to your inner conscience and listen to what it is work you got to do the right work don't chase after money but do the work that we all have something in our mind that we want to make this world a better place. Ever since a kid, it always come back to us and back to us. You got to serve God by working and doing the right work. And that's hard to find, but you got to find what it is your purpose is. And the only way to do that is to try different things. So doing the work, working hard, training, you know, you don't have to read a bunch of books. You don't even have to read if you can't read, but you got to train. You got to train to get your skill sets and to improve your skills, to master your craft. And then training martial arts is something I 100% support. It's what saved my life. Uh, I trained the art of capoeira, uh, martial arts in terms of like jiu-jitsu, boxing, the whole nine. Pick a martial art. It's a way to be healthy. Helps you, you know, gives you motivation to get in shape. Group activities is always good to be a part of. Um, and then live clean and just stop putting any types of toxins into your body. You know, look at women with a clean mind, lust, greed, 
anger, addictions, attachments, egos. You got, we got, get, you got rid of that anger. It's just the process day by day. So whenever you do feel those things that pull on you, you got to remember God and focus and worship on God's name and repent from those sins and just work hard. That's really my process of healing. It's like, it's a true battle. Like I come from a background, you know, my guru taught me, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, he's somebody, he, he's a, a, a guru from Sikhi. Long story short, he said a lot of beautiful things. He said that this path towards God is a battle. There's no getting around that. And very few are those who even acknowledge that it's a battle. And of those who acknowledge that there's a battle, even less of them are willing to fight that battle. And the rarest of the rare are those who are actually victorious in that battle. And a true warrior is he or she who fights to reveal God's love is what Guru Nanak said. This is the knowledge of my ancestors that makes perfect sense. So it's the transition from, you know, to whatever, to becoming a warrior. And a warrior is someone who fights for the sake of love and justice and realizing that the only enemies are inside us. So we have to fight against our, no man or woman can be my enemy. It's only, there is not possible. Only enemies are anger, lust, greed, addictions, attachments, ego, and pride inside of us. Now, another man can be overcome by their enemies and try to attack me out of greed because they greedy and want to take my stuff or anger or whatever the case may be. And if I'm wrong, I got to apologize and figure out what I did to trigger that person. And if I'm wrong, I need to apologize and make it right. If I didn't do anything wrong and they just in the wrong attacking me, then you protecting your de defend yourself out of love, love for justice. There's no hatred involved. It's just that I love justice and I love, you know, I love justice and I love life more than I'm more than letting you take that from. Me. And I think that's where all the healing comes from. Loving yourself and really understanding what really love is. You know what I'm saying? Just understand it which, and, and love protects. You try to put all those concepts in a word I think is love is what comes out of it. Like, but true, genuine love, not attachment. I'm talking about really genuine, solid love that's, you know, when you love yourself, love justice, you know what I mean? Speaking of self-love, Dr. Nikhil, you know, how important is it to surrender to, say, moments of being still in meditation and reading or what have you and also adopting that flow state in motion so i do that obviously you mentioned martial arts which is again i've seen your transformation i've seen your journey and i didn't i, I couldn't really grasp how you promoted martial arts so much until i actually started practicing the mm. martial arts and when i engage in martial arts specific to our forms that we do in our in our school it's almost like a, a spirit takes over and I tap into that flow state. I appreciate myself so much at a greater and deeper level. You know, having a still mind in the flow states, that's a good way to put it. That's like, that's where the money's at. That's where all the money's at. And I say that metaphorically mm -hmm. and even, mm -hmm. and even literally like meditation. It's, you have to control, you have to be able to control your mind. You have to be able to focus your mind in order to be successful at anything, whatever it is that you want to be, you want to be a rapper, you want to be anything you want to be, you have to be able to focus your mind and be able to uh, focus and work and put your hours in, regardless of what it is. Professionally, in any profession, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, teacher, anything, there's so many, and those are just like things that come to mind. You can have your own business, which is what I really promote, independence and whatnot. You have to be able to focus your mind and meditation is the purpose and the practice of focusing one's mind. So when I meditate, I try to see light. I try to feel love and I try not to have my thoughts control me, but instead control my thoughts and focus my mind. So that and then the flow states, that's where it's at. Things go in cycles. You know, you start to slowly warm up and then get more and more intense and build it up. That's how you train good. Then you go to a period of intensity and then you slow back down, stretch a little bit and then get back or deeper into it and more intensity. If you start to learn to work like that, study like that, you know, work like that, really get in the groove of things. You start to really get in the zone. And that's what we saw Jordan do. 
that's what we saw. How you train is how you perform when it's when the pressure's on. So getting, I want to, I try to do that every day. That's what I really try to do is to get into that flow state to where a point where you keep flowing and you start to really be connected to everything around you. So you're a, you're a medical doctor, doctor and kill. You're also, you practice martial arts. So I'm going to say, you know, you're an MMA type of things, right? Right. So you've mm -hmm. explored different martial arts and I want to say, uh, you're, I'm going to also label you as an MC because I know you love, you love music and, and you're an artist. So, uh, what type of other hobbies do you engage with or in that sort of keeps you grounded or you consider fun? So again, I'm just throwing the music stuff out there because I know you and you're a, you're yeah. a, you're a great, you're a great artist. You're a great lyricist and all that stuff. Uh, do you want to touch a little bit of, of, of that? That's really, that's like my main go-tos is poetry, my rats. You know, my friend says harder than, or really than rap, harder than poetry. I mean, that's what we do. But yeah, I, I rap, I make music, definitely express a lot of my thoughts through the raps and the poems that I write. Uh, that's a lot of fun for me, freestyling and all that. But I don't know, maybe, even if they don't press play, they still can't play. Cause I bring a hood to hood myself, it's all gravy. Family full of soldiers, army, air force, navy. But me, I'm God's army, the pure to the gravy. Roots in Punjab, dirty South Jersey raised me. Suburb taught me, but the hood made me. But it's not mine, it's yours, and by yours I mean the Lord. The battlefield is my mind, and your name is the sword. Concentration is the shield, work ethic is the armor. Respect, courage, honor. I come from a lineage of warriors and farmers who work hard every day, especially through the drought. And my enemies, laziness, distractions, and doubt. I definitely train. That's so much fun to me. Training, sparring, any of the warrior activities is just so much fun. Yeah, like all of the different warrior activities is just a lot of fun for me. That's really like my most fun and my most hobbies is right there. And then I like learning. I like learning about, I like building and having real conversations like this. It's, I'm at a point now where if it's not a real conversation, I just keep it moving. And, and you know, you get that feeling when you feel like we're not really growing further, then I'm, I'm good at just saying peace whatever, whoever it is, but no, it could be my mom. You know what I mean? Like you might even like, you know, I just keep moving and keep growing and I just try to keep learning. So besides that, so, and then those activities get done, get back to words, uh, improving my craft. So studying. What are, what are the habits of success that you've established for, or, or, or day-to-day -day habits that establishes the tone for long-term success? 100%, man. Keep learning, keep growing. Learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Learn how to be overwhelmed and be, and, you know, stay calm, stay poised. What we say in medicine is triage, meaning figure out what's the most important thing and do that first. Uh, and just staying poised under pressure, keep learning, keep growing. Not being scared to fail, not being, you know, you got to face your fears. It's like you got to be be able to get out of your comfort zone. You got to be able to uh, develop routines and habits. That's how the body works. That's how babies work. You know, that's how life works. You got to be able to have routines. Waking up early is something I'm still working on. As a doctor, we wake up early. One thing doctors do is they wake up early in the morning. You know what I mean? But I want to, you know, my whole life has been a challenge. So I'm kind of, because at one point again, I was up all night, slept all day. That was regular. Now it's like, you know, I, I want to wake up early in the morning, get to work. You know, I still struggle with that on my one day off. You know, I might sleep a little bit in, but I want to wake up early regardless. Waking up early, getting a routine, and just keep pushing through failures and not being scared to fail. If you have it in your mind that you're not going to quit, then you're going to be successful. That's just the way the world works. That's just the way the world works. And you got to have patience. Don't look at what everyone else is doing. Like when I realized I was struggling a lot, you see other people winning and this and that. And your mind plays tricks. And every time, the minute my mind started to be like, oh, this person, like, man, that's them. You know what I mean? I'm not comparing myself to them. I realized I got a different purpose and I'm going to a different place. You know what I mean? And I'm okay with that. Like, they don't really, they don't know 
what I've been through, what I was going through. They don't know, have a clue. And I don't know what they're going through. So you can't judge other people too, because you never know what they're going through. They might be going through something worse than you. They just not talking about it. Usually the people going through the most don't even talk about it, you know? So it's like not comparing myself to others, realizing that it's not about a time clock and a schedule, but I'm on God's time. What, what pieces of advice would you give to your younger self at this moment Man, of your lifetime? I would say, number one, learn how to fight. Learn how to fight real good. I know that sounds crazy, but <laughs> that's what I would tell my younger self. And then number two, once you learn how to fight, do everything you can to avoid fighting because you know how to do it so you don't have to prove to anybody anything. Be strong enough to be yourself. You know, um, be nice, be kind. More important than being tough is being helpful. But actually, you got to be tough to be helpful. A lot of people don't help people because they're scared. Because you're right. If you, if you weak, they take advantage of it. But if you're really strong, for real, in the true sense of it, you'll be able to help people because the moment they try to take advantage from you, you won't let them. And then, you know... You, figured out from there and once they realize that you're helping them out of a place of strength instead of weakness they have no choice but to not only honor and respect it but you know they definitely nine times out of ten of my experience stand down i would say be kind be polite you don't don't have to don't chase an image don't 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 like like you are cool don't 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 try to be cool i never really tried to Ultimately, for the youth, I would say don't try to be cool. You know what I mean? If you really cool, you're going to set what's cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be the trendsetter instead of the trend follower. You know, be the trendsetter instead of the trend follower. Like, you know, like, yeah, it's cool to be clean. It's cool to, to be respectful to women. It's cool to never lie. Like, it's not. It's You're not real if you're not real with women. Like, if you lying to women, you're not real. By God's grace, that's not something I ever had to really I've always been real with women. But I'm just saying, like, in our culture, I tell the kids and people that I would say it's cool to be clean and stand on it. You know, stand on being clean, being, you know, you don't, you don't, you know what I mean? And people going to respect you a lot more. Even at, at first, they might because it's a little different. But ultimately, they respect you if you, you are solid, you're a good friend. You always ride to protect and defend. But you don't gotta be, you don't gotta go out of your way to prove a point with people. Just be yourself. And when they cross a line, don't let them. Really, you get more far, farther in people and people and creating a reputation that you want. Just be there to help your friends and your family and everybody, all your friends and tell you and see how solid you are. I don't know. I, I really that's what comes to my mind because when I was younger, that's what played a lot in my life because when I was younger I was soft and then after that I tried to go super hard and then I really OD'd on it and went overboard with that and it really led me to a deep dark place that a lot of people don't really come back from some of my friends is doing life behind some of my people they, you know what I'm saying they doing like crazy life long years because they got caught up in that and that could have been me but by God's grace it wasn't um, also you could be cool, man, wherever you from, bro. Be yourself. If you from a suburb, it's cool to be from the suburb. If you from the hood, it's cool to be from the hood. Like, you don't got to change yourself for these people to get accepted, period. Like, if you, like, one thing I pride myself on as a doctor, like, I look how I look, which is the image of my ancestors. Really, it's the image that God made me. I just don't cut my hair. And I cover my head. That's every prophet. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's still pulling them all. That's how they all were. And in, in, in Punjab, that we kept it. You know what I mean? Like, if you, wherever you from, if you from a suburb, then that's fine. If you from the hood, then that's fine. That's where you from. Like, however you talk, however you are, whatever your life experiences are, you don't have to change how you talk. Because you could change how you talk. Let's say you a black man, healthy black man. They going to hate you, some people. You a Mexican man. You're Latino, you feel me? You're a Punjabi, you're, you know, Muslim, you're whatever America, you know what I'm saying, doesn't value. You're valuable. 
you're super valuable and we need you to be yourself. You don't have to change the way you talk. No, you have to be professional, but that has nothing to do with your accent. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with how hard you work. That has to do with how much of a team player you are. That has to do with how hard you study and how well you know your field. Not to do with your characteristics, but it has to do with your character. And a lot of us feel like we have to change ourselves to be accepted. And it happens every day. But at the end of the day, you end up losing yourself and they don't like you anyway. You're just disposable to them in any case. First time there's pressure, they cut you off and fire you like you never, like, you know what I'm saying? That's how they play around here. Like the corporate ladder is more grimy than anything else I've seen. So when you are yourself and you do stay true to yourself and your culture, like you're Indian from India or whatever, you're, you're Vietnamese, Cambodian, or all the different beautiful cultures. You're from Poland, Ireland, like wherever you're from, you know what I'm saying? You're whatever, like it's just one humanity and you just be yourself and people will honor that and value that for real. And you will get where you're supposed to go. And no man can stop what God wants. Yeah, we all deal with it, but I, I don't let it be. And when these people try to like, nah, bro, I just be myself, period. And I think that'll get you real far. It, it'll get you where you're supposed to go. Might not get you through every door, but it'll get you through doors where you meant to be in. That way, wherever you do end up, you're going to be welcome for being who you are. Luckily, by God's grace, I, I value where I work at because, you know, I work in an inner city program. Not everyone values it, but my bosses who gave me the job. By God's grace, God blessed me with a with honorable, like, you know, in Punjabi culture, you're supposed to be honorable or work for an honorable boss. That's the way it works. That's how you maintain your honor. Either you, Either you're a boss or you work for an honorable boss. And God always blessed me like with honorable bosses, but praise God for that. It's, it's one thing that I like to somewhat, and this is me personally, I like to play with this concept of, you know, advice to our younger version of ourselves. And also sometimes I get these imagery, this imagery of what I may look like down the road, future self, um, right? Um, and I, t- I ask myself, am I doing the work to get to, to that better version of myself right if, 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 am I exceeding my my full potential right because there's no for me there's no concept of full potential there's unlimited potential right and so and so I, I guess I say that to ask you um you know what what would you like to say to you know the that future version of yourself man we did it <laughs> like we wherever you at it's because you stuck to your, you stuck to your guns at that time so don't you know what I mean like I would say, I know I'm stubborn and I know I'm hard headed, but wherever you at now is because I did it my way. And by my way, I mean submitting to God and, you know what I mean? My future self, wow. You got me envisioning my future self. Just, I want to stand tall through every situation. So when I get older, even if I get in a bad situation, I still can. I still can reminisce and, and feel like, man, I did it the honorable way. It's not important for me to win. It's just important for me to do the right thing. That's like the real truth of how I really feel. I feel like the, it's not important for me, to, for me to win. It's important for me to just do the honorable thing. So even if I end up in a bad situation in the future, I can't be mad because I did it my way. But seems like things are going to turn out good. Um, I would tell my future self, I just know, man, when you do the wrong thing, you do the dishonorable thing, you look back, you have regrets, you feel like a sucker. You know what I mean? I, I tell you that. That's the truth. And I just vouch that I'm never going to do the same sucker stuff twice. Like, I'm never going to, I'm always going to learn from it. And then, by God's grace, I gave my life back to God and you know, I look back and God always protected and preserved my honor. That's the really the most important thing to me of the world, really my faith and my honor. So I just pray that I'm able to do the honorable thing. And even if that gets me in a bad situation, that's okay. Because I did what was I thought to be right. 
even if that means I get hurt for that or whatever. So in the future, I hope I can look back and say, you know what? You did the most honorable thing every step of the way. Thinking of past and the future, you know, can you just tell us how you stay grounded nowadays, you know, stay in the present moment? I stay grounded for me by meditating on God's name and worshiping God and always be, you know, having the remembrance of the presence of God. And I stay grounded by training daily, studying, not wasting the time, and just constantly try to refocus my mind in the present moment, constantly keep writing down my to-do lists so I don't forget anything, always keep a to-do list around handy. Uh, in order to make sure that whatever I tell someone I'm going to do, I get it done. Whatever my deadlines are, I get it done. Whatever I need to get it do, I get it done. So that way it's out of my head. It's on the paper. I don't have to worry about forgetting it. So I keep referring to it. You know, long term, I always, last couple of years, I've been using New Year's Eve just to be in a crib and envision. I, I vision what I want for my life daily. I ask myself very often, like, what do you really want out of life? What is the life that I really want? And I've been doing that for years now. So I visualize what it is I'm trying to create. And then I'm also fluid in, in terms of as things come along, you know, I just stay fluid in what life gives me and what life doesn't. Certain times doors get shut down. And I just submit to God's will and it always works out and I always have patience. So I stay grounded by submitting to God's will training training martial arts help me ground. I want to improve my discipline of meditation to be even more grounded, improve my breathing, be conscious of my breath, be conscious of my posture. I've been trying to work on my posture more. Those are the types of things I do to stay grounded. If you can list any recommendations on any books that you recommend, uh, movies, films, music, uh, resources that you like to, you know, just call out that has helped you along the way. So my, my biggest resource, I would say, is your own inner self. And I would say, instead of reading a whole bunch of books, write a book. I would say, what's your thoughts? Instead of everybody telling you what their thoughts are, what do you think? I would say, instead of, instead of watching a movie, make a movie. Yeah, I live a movie. My life is a movie. I'm busy making movies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for real. Like, you know, that's how, that's really what I'm on. Like, instead of listening to music, you know, I, I, how many rappers can I really feel what they talk about? hundred. I'm real big on the message. Not saying that there's none, but I'd rather make music than listen to music for real, for real. I like those old school Hindi movies, the ones where the people, like the ancestors, used to be like they used to be honorable man. They would like yo, India. Man, they use, it's like movies with warrior. They got warriors, love stories, and saints. That's the background. So you have a king, I mean, and he is a love story, and then he's a warrior too. There's this movie called Mogle Azam, Jodi Akbar. There's these movies, man. These are Indian classics. Yo, the prince took his dad. Like, listen, the prince, and it's supposed to be a true story too. The prince took his dad to war behind the woman that he loved. He created a whole inkalab, a whole revolution. Because he was the prince, right? He fell in love with the with the maid, basically, the servant. So he was going to be the king. He wanted to marry the servant. The king was like, no, you can't do that because you can't make a servant into a queen. And he was like, well, I'm the prince. I get to choose my wife. <laughs> and I know how deep love could be. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I understood. Like, you know, he, he was like, nah. So he did a whole revolution. He tried to take his dad to war behind that. Ended up losing a battle and all that. But, um, man, it's just interesting stuff. Like, I like that type of stories. Um, those classic. Like, you know, where you live by your code of honor. And, but I've, I've ultimately realized that, nah, I wouldn't <clears throat> take my, my family to war for love, even though I know how deep it could be.
you how to do the right thing. Where would you see yourself in the next five years? I see myself working as a primary medical doctor in the community in Camden and being as grassroots and helpful to the community, the community health clinic, God willing, so I could really just help people with their lifestyle. Then I'm thinking about maybe doing that for like two years and then maybe going to work in the jails for like two years, maybe possibly with the prison population as a doctor. And then at the same time, setting up a martial arts class. And then I want to eventually after that branch out into small businesses like real estate to help clean the city up. And I just want to focus on the youth in Camden and the youth in Voorhees, like Indian kids and from Voorhees who really like, I want to help them with their sciences and help them teach their martial arts. And then I want to help kids in Camden by teaching them also, you know, sciences and martial arts, just try to instill values, ethics and principles into them. And uh, being around just to be helpful, I do want to make a movie. I don't know, five years, though, maybe a little bit past that. But in the next five years, I want to publish the book. I want to take what the doctor knows and share it with the common people. Create a resource. That's what I want. I'm in Jersey City, New Jersey. God willing, I'll be back home in South Jersey, the Camden County, 856 area, Camden, New Jersey. Uh, probably have my mom set up in the suburb, like Voorhees or somewhere close. I'd be in Camden, God willing. A nice little crib, build it. Yeah, I got a YouTube channel, Nikhil Singh Bhalla, N-I-K-H-I-L-S-I-N-G-H-B-H-A-L-L-A. I I really don't plan on releasing a whole bunch of music. I got a whole bunch of music done, but uh, again, I'm not so sure about how and when I'm going to release it. Eventually, at some point, definitely, I'm going to share it with the world. But just when the time is right, probably build up a whole volume of library, of a whole a library of material, and then start releasing it. Like, one a week, like, just keep hitting them over the head. It ain't no control of me. No, I don't accept it if it don't make sense. If I think I'm right, I buy it hard, my mentality. No matter what they do. I'm going to develop a strategy. Like music is there, but it's kind of right now uh, prioritizing just getting my career situated. Um, looking forward, man, to move, moving back home, God willing, and just being around to be a servant to serve the people and eventually try to restore health and well being. And my message to the youth of Camden and Voorhees and everybody, everywhere is. It's all about time to develop a healthy relationship with God, healthy relationship with ourselves, healthy relationship with earning money the right way, healthy relationship with women, and a healthy relationship with a woman, you know what I mean, with our wife. Or if people got multiple wives too, like basically just don't lie to women, but I'm really getting like I'm the type to have one wife, but if the next man has multiple wives, as long as he does it in an honorable fashion, no one's being lied to, no one's being forced in a situation they don't want to be in, just be honest, you know what I mean? And then having a healthy relationship with violence, that's really the key. And then that, and then just keeping your honor intact and being solid and being a solid friend. Don't turn your back on nobody. Be there to help your family and friends. Dr. Nikhil, thank you so much for uh, you know being part of this this conversation with uh, with the the Heart to Court channel. I appreciate everyone for tuning in and listening to what Dr. Nikhil has to say to everyone uh, in the audience. Thank you for sharing with us uh, your knowledge uh, scientifically uh, in in uh, medicine, and also again those sharing with us developing those habits of success for uh, personal development as well. I appreciate it, man. It's my honor, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for creating this platform. This is much needed. And I wish I would have seen stuff like this. Imagine my little younger seeing this. That's amazing. So, you know, God bless and much respect to everybody who tunes in and sees this. You know what I mean? Peace to everybody listening, man. You know, thank you for listening to me and hearing me out. If you're still listening from when we started, man, then salute to you. You're a real one, man. I want to meet you. I want to link with you because you're obviously real. <laughs> For real. You know what I mean? So you take care, man. Much love and respect to everybody, man. 
May God bless. I just want to say a prayer, man. May God bless us to just keep our honor intact, work hard to all of us, whoever's listening, whoever's in on this, you know, to to help us do the right thing, to work hard, to create our dreams, to be successful at what we want to do, to be healthy, to live clean, to stay honorable, to stay solid, to always, uh, you know, do the right thing and to always just heal and just live out the life that's meant for us and to eventually achieve God consciousness. And in God's name we pray.